Rob Shark, we're in the studios today, just outside of Bradford, Illinois. It's too wet to farm. I don't want to talk about it. It is what it is. It is too wet, but the sun is shining. That makes it better. The wind is howling. Yes, it's drying. It's a drying wind. That's what I tell you. <laughs> yeah, I see everybody online is finishing up what they're planning. Oh, right? please, plant, they are not. Plant 2020 is done. <laughs> hey, good for you. Congratulations. <laughs> we're holding out for prevent plant here. No, people but... are just getting started, Rob. So, hey, I got good news. All right. So I underestimated the the pressure on a hydraulic hose, and I got hydraulic oil all over my sweatshirt. So I ran in real quick to get another one, and I'm in the laundry room, and I look out back, and guess what I saw? Well, I'm still stuck on the hydraulic fluid. Like, you didn't put that in my washing machine, did you? It's... Well, no, it's, it's oh, no. fine. And no, no. It's, no, honestly, how long have you been married to me? Have I ever put anything actually in the washing machine? <laughs> no, it's sitting on the floor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's still okay. I can still get rid of it. It'll be fine. Anyway, what did you see out I the window? I saw our nemesis, the, the ground squirrels, the 13 line ground squirrels that have made a colony in our backyard. Yes. And we took out a couple of them the other day. Did you get one? I did get one. And this morning, though, uh, he was way out there and I missed. But what was hilarious was this morning. So was it maybe a little after six o'clock, right? Yeah. The dog got me up early. And so, yeah, we were up and I was working and you come down and I look out and there's a ground squirrel back there. And I'm like, grab your gun. Yeah. So you open up the window. You're cranking this thing. And our oldest son's <laughs> bedroom is next yes. to the bathroom downstairs. <laughs> and so we woke him up shooting the gun, which wasn't very nice. <laughs> I don't think he was impressed. I enjoyed it. I, I don't think he did. I shoot with a uh, cowboy, a Colt Cowboy 45, the lever action, because I love that gun because, it, you know, it's lever, you're like the rifleman and all that. But <laughs> it's not that loud like if i would like to take a 223 out there or something like that that would rattle the entire house this gun is it's louder than a 22 well but... i think it's a very thin wall between that bathroom and his bedroom and so all i hear is oh, really yeah I and know. then i don't hear another thing for like a couple hours we couldn't we couldn't hear anything <laughs> because we were laughing too hard <laughs> all right uh today let's go up to michigan all right emily who do you got today all right, so I found these girls on Instagram. Okay. So this is fabulous. Yes, Megan and Madison Kenny from uh, the the Saginaw Bay area up there in Michigan. How you doing, ladies? Good. Thank you for having us. You betcha. Yeah, we're good. Uh, we're excited. <laughs> Do we have both of you on? Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Okay. All right, so where exactly is the Saginaw Bay up in Michigan? We are about two hours north of Detroit. Um, I don't know. We are located on M46. Anybody familiar with Michigan? We're right. Our farm is, you can see it from M46. Well, everybody who talks about Michigan always puts their hands up and shows on what thumb or finger you're located, <laughs> yes. which cracks me up. Okay, I think it's just so a thing you guys grow up with. So what finger are you on? <laughs> so if you're a typical Michigander, if you hold your hand up, um, the crease in the between your index finger and your thumb, like in the little um, valley right there, if you go over about an inch, that's where you can find us. See, that's so, so perfect. Now we know. Your mid thumb, then. Um, about yeah, right under your index finger, pretty much straight out from your thumb. Yep. Okay. All right, I got you. See, she, 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 you can envision this perfectly. I now. wish our state was. I know, right? <laughs> fashioned like a body part. <laughs> okay, all right. So, who's the oldest? I am. I we are actually a trio of sisters, um, but our middle sister isn't involved in the farm, and I am the oldest, and Madison is the youngest. Okay, guess what? I was the youngest, so let's start with Madison. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Madison, uh, what are you guys growing up there? Okay, so on our farm, we grow pickles, corn, soybeans, sugar beets, and then we occasionally. Yeah, you should have grown all wheat this year, along with me. That would have been That's fantastic. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, these corn prices are not very good. 
I really hadn't noticed. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, <laughs> Megan, tell tell me about the the pickle business. How long have you guys been doing that? So we have the farm has actually been growing pickles since the '60s. Um, but in 1984, um, with the encouragement of Velasic, we opened a grading station. Um, that so essentially at the grading station, what happens is farmers, including ourselves, bring in pickles from the field. We wash and sort them by size and send them out either to manufacturing plants or brining tank yards. Um, and in 2016, we added a brining tank yard. So we are kind of in the mix of it now. We don't techni- we don't manufacture. We still the tank yard products still shipped out to the manufacturer where they add the final flavorings and package. Okay, Vlasic. So, I mean, the one everybody knows, you're you're dealing with the big dog or the big stork. Yep, so that's kind of how we got into the grading. Um, we actually have a grading station in Delaware as well, and that we specifically opened for Vlasic. They had a manufacturing plant in Millsboro, Delaware, um, so they didn't want to do their own grading, so they had asked us if we would put one out there. That has since closed, but our grading station out there is still open. Okay. All right. That's fascinating. We're, we're going to have to roll into the break here, but when I come back, I, I want to know what exactly a brining tank yard is. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a pickle guy. Okay. I do love them. I'm a great customer of both the dill and the sweet and the gherkins. Perfect. I like them all. That's yes, today like to <laughs> we're talking with Megan and Madison Kenny from up there in Michigan. They're growing everything, including uh, pickles. We'll be back right after the break. What do you think of when you hear Palmer Amaranth or Water Hemp? If you use fierce herbicide in your soybean fields, you don't have to think about them at all. With two effective modes of action and up to eight weeks of residual control, Fierce takes on even the toughest weeds like water hemp and Palmer Amaranth. Take control of your soybean fields and get incentives from Bayer Plus Rewards when you choose the power of Fierce Herbicide. Talk to your local retailer today to put Fierce to work in your fields. Always read and follow label directions. High yield corn growers know that feeding the crop and soil are keys to maximizing yield potential. Nutex EDA and Reverb are specifically formulated to help manage limiting factors associated with today's farming conditions. Nutex EDA works within the plant to support nutrient mobility and utilization. Reverb focuses on the soil, providing beneficial trace elements which help condition the root zone for optimal microbial activity. Low use rates and superb tank mix compatibility make Nutex EDA and Reverb no-brainers in the high-yield grower toolbox. When it comes to my weed control, I know a head start can go a long way. That's why I spray early, so I can keep control all season long with a Roundup Ready Extend Crop System, the system that makes the difference. This is my field. Choose the Roundup Ready Extend Crop System for control of more weeds than any other soybean system. Featuring Extendamax herbicide with vapor grip technology to manage tough to control weeds, including up to 14 days of soil activity, along with the field proven performance of Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans. Now you have the right tools to extend your weed control and extend your yield with the system that makes the difference. Learn how you can put the system to work in your field when you visit RoundupReadyExtend.com. Extendamax is a restricted use pesticide. Performance may vary. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Check local regulations for specific requirements in your state. Introducing the Germinator Closing Wheel from Farm Shop MFG. We interrupt this message for an important announcement. In these uncertain times, many farmers are looking to prolong their grain storage. That's why Farm Shop MFG is offering a $12.50 credit per germinator towards the purchase of a Grain Temp Guard Alarm DT, up to $200 per unit. Protect last year's crop and start 2020 off right. Go to farmshopmfg.com to order today. I'll put my phone down. It's Clayton, our dictator, overlord, producer of the TV show. He knows what time we record this radio show, but he always texts me. He doesn't text me all day until right now. <laughs> Clayton. he's You know, he's worse than Janelle. I'll just oh, say it. I'll oh. just flat out say it. Oh, wow. Clayton is worse than Janelle. Thanks, wow. Thanks Rob. Fighting words. 
<laughs> Not worse than Alex, though. <laughs> That's right. Know your place. Yes, know your role. Emily, how are we doing on the pickle situation? Do we Every time I get sweet pickles and I go to eat them and those smaller versions of us have cleaned, them, cleaned me out. Well, you have to find a place in the fridge way in the back where nobody bothers to bend over and look. Yeah, and then I, you would have your pickles, but yeah. I oh, like no, they're gone. I like yeah. them cold. I don't like them room temperature. Yeah, so this this really fascinates me because I just would have figured that you girls would have just sent the cucumbers to Vlasic and they process them. And here I saw on your Instagram that you're washing them, you're, the whole brining process. Like, I never knew that was a thing. I would have guessed you were just growing uh, the cucumbers and sending them in. So this is really cool. Yeah, so actually you aren't totally incorrect. That's one way. That is called fresh pack, um, how you do that. So there's a couple different ways once they get from the field. Um, so they're graded. We call it grading. Grading, sent out. And when they go straight to the manufacturing plant, that is called fresh pack. That's typically what you see on the shelves at the store, you know, in your jars. It's been fresh packed. So essentially it's brined in the jar with the flavoring. Um, oh, wow, okay. But the tank yards is, that is a fermentation process. And typically most of what goes for fermentation goes for food service. So when you open your hamburgers at McDonald's or you get pickles on your sub at Subway, et cetera, that is typically fermented product. So that is what I do in the tank yard. So what happens is the pickles come off the grater. We haul them out just in a semi. Um, we have an unloading conveyor. Unload them into the tank. Um, there's brine, which is uh, it's made up of salt, calcium chloride, a small amount of potassium sorbate, and water. That's essentially what it's made up of. Gotcha. So you fill the tanks. You we call it. You cap them. Um, it's to keep the pickles from floating because as the fermentation process starts, the pickles are going to float and try to escape the tank, <laughs> essentially. You put what we call a head or a cap on to keep them down. Um, you add air circulation to them to keep, you know how like when you shake a can of pop, all the carbonation comes out? Mm-hmm. When, when fermentation first starts, the top of the tanks are going to, like there's foam. That's what it's doing. It's releasing the CO2 inside of the pickles, inside the cucumbers. So fermentation takes about three weeks, and when it's all done, you have what we call in the pickle world salt stock. And so that can sit in the fermentation tanks like up to a year or whatever. It's stable. You have a really low pH of like three to three and a half um, inside that tank. And then we ship um, on demand to the plants. So the plants call us, say, hey, we're looking for pickles are known in sizes. So say they're looking for relish. We load it up. Go, it goes to the plant where it goes into a desalt tank because you can eat it straight out of the tank. Um, it's just incredibly salty. It does not taste very good. I've seen people do it, but I not for me. I'm guessing Rob would do that. You really, really like salty things. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so the, it, these brine tags, so uh, how big are they? I mean, are we talking like a grain bin size or like a 55-gallon drum? What? How big are these things? So it depends, you know, what kind you have. Back in the day when, like, brine yards first started, they were wood. So far, was, nowadays they're fiberglass, like ours are fiberglass. Um, we have 150 of them. They are 11 and a half feet tall by 12 feet wide. They fit about 1,000 to 1,050 bushels of raw cucumbers in there, which in bushels, it's 50 pounds per bushel of pickles. So okay. you're talking 50 to 55,000 pounds of pickles per tank. So wow. these tank yards, then, is that more than just your farm? Is that like a, a collection area? So the tank, we only fill out of stuff that comes out of our grader, and we are actually a really small tank yard in the pickle world. Um, we actually, in our area, we have quite a few um, tank yards around us, and they are a lot bigger than us. So. Okay. All right, it's, just, it's fascinating, the, the whole pickle thing. I know. Because, How did we not know this? You know what's embarrassing, Emily, is that I did a podcast about this. 
going back, episode number 42, Andy Pasture. And you must not remember. It must not have really etched your brain. I must not have been that good back then. Is that what it is? Well, I don't think they had the whole braining thing going yeah, on. Yeah, you did. Oh. Well, oh, it's okay. It's all right. Well, it's been no, a while. Let's not fight on air. <laughs> 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 okay. So is this the, the whole, the you got the farm, right? You, you raise all the stuff and you got the pickles. And now do you guys separate out like uh, what person does what? Or is it like a collective work pool with the whole family? Madison, that's all you. You're there on more of a day-to-day basis than I am. (laughs) Yeah, so the farm is, I'm more of the farm. Megan's more of the pickle industry. So on the farm, um, my dad and my uncle, they run it all. And then we have, like, about 10 full-time employees. And we all kind of have specific jobs. And then me, I'm just the gopher. I do everything for them. But... Like, we have the specific guys who run planters, combines, harvesters, and then most of us are all involved in the pickles, like the harvesting and bringing them to the pickle site, and then that's where Megan takes over. Gotcha. Okay, so it is fairly a division of labor, you would say. You guys have your your own special niches. Right, but everybody's a little bit of a jack-of-all-trades. You kind of got to know how to do everything around here on the fly. So, so Madison does know. I mean, she knows the pickle business, but maybe not the the specific settings and all this stuff, like in the brining tank yard. Right. Okay. All right. Well, I tell you what, uh, we're coming into the last segment, because you guys are on what, Instagram? Are you on other social medias? Um, so far, we just have Instagram. Okay. We're well, new I wanna... at it. Oh, that's okay. I mean, you got everybody's got to be new at some point. But when we come back, I want to talk about that a little bit. What you're hoping to achieve by getting on Instagram, uh, what you're going to be showing, all sorts of stuff like that. Today, we're talking with Megan and Madison Kenny. They're up there in Michigan, up there somewhere around the finger and the thumb uh, by 42 somewhere. They raise pickles. We'll be back right after the break. You're so relatable, read between the lines, start to loosen up your mind. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy. All the way down to the last drop. AgroLiquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less. Expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. Challenging field conditions often make harvest difficult. Can your corn head handle it? The GTS X10 corn head from AgroUS is a rugged, cost-effective alternative to heavier, more traditional heads. Constructed of durable yet lightweight aluminum, the X10 puts less strain on your combine without losing harvest effectiveness. And it is 40% lighter than traditional heads, reducing field compaction in those less than ideal conditions. For more information, give us a call at 8334-AGRA-US. Revitech fungicide from BASF has been specifically developed for the selective soybean grower who doesn't compromise. If you think good is good enough, if you're okay with just achieving rather than overachieving, if average is your goal, this is not the fungicide for you. Revitech fungicide, brand new chemistry, three no excuse modes of action, zero modes of compromise. Sounds like the fungicide for you. Revitech fungicide from BASF, that's smart. Always read and follow label directions. This is a seed bag. This bag is made of craft paper with a cellophane liner and provides nothing for seed growth. This is a seed bed. It was prepared with Case IH soil management tools. It optimizes everything from nutrient access to water infiltration to create the perfect environment for early uniform emergence. Get to know why your seed bed drives productivity at caseih.com slash soil management. Before it's too late and white mold becomes a problem, you need to ask your seed dealer for Heads Up Seed Treatment. When raising soybeans in the Midwest, you know the risk of being caught unprepared. As heard on Ag PhD, there are several steps you can take prior to planting for a successful management plan against white mold. 
Compatible and cost-effective season-long protection starts now by asking your seed dealer to apply Heads Up to your 2020 bean seed order. For more information, visit HeadsUpST.com. You deserve to have a building that will last for generations. With more than 110 years of experience and thousands of satisfied customers, Morton Buildings is the industry leader you can trust. Unlike other construction companies, you work with Morton Buildings craftsmen from conception to completion. There's no better time to buy. Lock in your new building for 2020 today. Contact your local Morton sales office or visit mortonbuildings.com. Okay, I'd like to officially apologize to Janelle and Alex and Clayton. Is that better, Emily? Sure. Okay. Thanks, right, Emily. We- <laughs> I got your back. Uh-huh. Okay. So, uh the Is that painful? It, very painful. I I feel awkward now. That's I hate when Janelle has something over me. It just <laughs> bugs me. All right. Uh the the rerun of the Shark Farmer TV show is on Saturday. What's that? 2 2:30 Central or 1:30 Central? I can never remember the time zones. Look I think it it's up. It's 2:30. Yeah. It's 2:30 or 1:30. Yeah, and that was the second episode. We've already had two out, which is so cool. Yeah. So and- if you missed Tuesday night, you can see it on Saturday. And this is why I, you know, Madison, I they, the Kenny's got my attention is because when I was on Instagram, I saw their pickles going through the conveyor and they were washing them. And I saw all these tubs, which I guess is part of their brining. And I thought that would be a cool video for the show. Yeah, we're going to totally, totally steal that video for the show. But here's the thing, right? I mean, we're farmers. We get this stuff. But even we find it fascinating when you're looking at different crops, different way to do things. Absolutely. So I think it's uh, I think it's great when people put this stuff out there on social media. So Megan and Madison Kennedy, Kenny, Kenny from Michigan, uh, who decided to go ahead and start this Instagram account. Um, that would have been me, Madison. I followed a couple accounts on Instagram, and I really liked what they were posting. And I was, I asked Megan, I was like, "Would you start one with me?" And so we just started it, and we're just gonna see. We thought people would be really interested in the pickle stuff because that's different because, like, I'm interested in stuff that we don't grow. So we thought it would be interesting. Yeah, it is. It's And it's going to be uh, to a lot of people. And I will say a lot of times when you have the females on there, especially the younger females, it seems to get more attention because, I mean, even though it's a lot different than it used to be, but I would still say you're the minority. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you go to the sure. the farm meetings. Uh, or not too many other uh, gals there to hang around with. No, no, so not at all. Pickle, <laughs> yeah, on the pickle side, we're part of a trade organization, and there, when we go to our conferences, there's a lot more males in the room than there are females. But there's a good mix. You know, there's more every time we go, which is really good to see. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Well, so what do you hope to get out of doing this, this Instagram of putting yourself out there on social media? You know, I think for both of us, we both think there's a, even more so this, like the COVID-19 thing has showed it a lot. There's a huge disconnect between people and where their food, feed, fibers, whatever comes from. You know, a lot of people just you know, stuff just shows up on the grocery shelves where there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes to get that from the field to your grocery shelf. You're, you're in this probably more than anybody else could understand, but how many, your opinion, how many people out there in the United States percentage wise don't even know that a pickle's a cucumber? You, there's a lot, you know, because we say pickle because that's what it ends up. They're pickling cucumbers. You know, I've been in quite a few debates. I don't know about you, Madison, but I have. And if it's a pickle or is it a cucumber? Jeez. Oh, yeah, me too. I'd say, like, the vast percentage of the world doesn't even know. Yeah, I, w- I would probably agree. And you, you hit it on the head with the COVID stuff. I mean, hopefully, if we get anything good out of this, people will be more interested in where their food comes from what's all involved with it, and how lucky they are that they can go to a grocery store, pick themselves a, a jar of Vlasic pickles or whatever. The other, well, What's the other brands? I don't even know besides Vlasic. 
Um, you have Mount Olive, and they are located in Mount Olive, North Carolina. They are actually one of our customers as well. Um, locally, though, it's pretty cool. Um, Houseback Pickle Company, they you can buy them locally, and they supply a lot of food service. Um, there is Fassinger, Mount Olive and Vlasic, Clawson, yep. Those are the refriger- the ones you see in the refrigerated section. Um, Heinz, their relish. Oh, yeah. Well, and th- these companies have it down. I mean, I... <laughs> All right, all right, Kate, so don't hold this against me. But, like, you'll get people that give you the homemade pickles, and they're like, oh, these are the best pickles in the world, so much better than you get in a store. I take them, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I'm thinking of the back of my head, eh, something's off. There is a lot of, like, food safety stuff, you know, pH controls to make sure that, you know, you're not giving people any foodborne illnesses, you know, with the fermentation. So I tend to steer clear of homemade pickles just because a lot of people don't know that. (laughs) <laughs> you need to be experimenting with some sort of uh, pickle juice alcohol. I know. that's. Um, McC- I don't know if you, you guys are familiar with um, McClure's. They are actually located in Detroit. They do a Bloody Mary mix, and part of it is their pickle brine that's part of it. Let's see, there you go. Boy, you guys, you could be like bootlegging and doing all sorts of stuff here pretty <laughs> soon. Think how many Instagram followers <laughs> you'll get then. Maybe that'll be our next adventure. <laughs> that would be a funny post. Yes. All right. You you mentioned though you, there's there's three sisters, correct? Yes. Okay, and the third one is not involved in the farm. Nope. She is our middle sister. Um, her name is Allison. Saturday, she was actually supposed to graduate from Michigan State, but she's not going to be able to get to do her graduation because of this. She is graduating with a degree in neuroscience. She's interested in the medical field. Yeah, but think, just think if like some neurological disease could be cured by I had some something with a pickle. My gosh, she would have such a leg up on this. She would, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always got to be thinking ahead. Okay. All right. So how's it looking this year? As far as the farming going, how are you guys getting along up here? So far, it's going pretty good. We have all of our sugar beets in the ground. We're over half done with corn. Um, and then we just started soybean planting three days ago. And then we'll start pickle planting um, in June. But it's doing good. We've probably got an inch and a half of rain in the last day. So that's going to hold us up for a little bit. But a lot better than last year. Fingers crossed. Yeah, you remember your last year? That's that's pretty much me this year. Yeah, yeah, it's a rough one. We feel for you. <laughs> it started raining, and now he's nervous. There? I think all the farmers around here, every time it rains now, they're going to worry it won't shut off. <laughs> what is it? I mean, what is it? It's like May thirtieth, right? <laughs> 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 Try again. See, uh, it's it early. Is. It's okay. Deep all right. breaths. All right, Megan and or Madison, uh, where can people find you on the old Instagram? So our Instagram handle is MI Farm Sisters. So it's Michigan Farm Sisters. Okay. All right. I, I can't believe that hasn't been taken already. I know. Apparently, there's not <laughs> a lot of sisters farming in Michigan or something. Yeah, it's very cool. Like you guys said, you're just starting out, but uh, I mean, you, you've got, seems like you got a knack for like taking videos and kind of showing what you do. I mean, for, like I said, for us, we're farmers. We still found it fascinating. So I would love for you guys to keep doing what you're doing and showing the world how their pickles are made. We're oh, going to try. Sure. I'm into droning and photography. So be on the lookout for some drone videos and all right the the drone pickle you need to like put a pickle in someone's mouth with a drone you make get make this happen <laughs> ladies megan and madison kenny from michigan thank you very much it's mi farm sisters as a michigan farm sisters we'll catch everybody tomorrow Get ready for, get ready.